Backfire Hammer First Impressions. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little first impression review of the Backfire Hammer. I've taken it out on like pretty much like about three full charges right now. So I have a little bit of a first impressions here. I'm going to be doing probably a, a more in-depth review later on. Right now I've been pretty much riding my Backfire G3, putting tons of miles on it. I think it's about like at 860-ish. Right out the gate, I'm just gonna jump into the pros that I had with this board. The pros was it has a very, very good look. Now, all these Evolve clones look really good. Sometimes the hammer, in my opinion, can look the best of the cheaper Evolve clones. It has just a very, very noticeable, catchy look, and it's just something you want in a high-end escape. It's got tons of power. Now, I'm sure that there's other boards out there with more power than this, but the power on this thing was just absolutely ridiculous. Like, oh, I'm a pretty heavy guy. Like, I'm about 200 to 210, like, with all the gear that I have on. I had absolutely no issues with this. Most of the time, I just left it in sport, and it just flew. It had amazing, amazing power. I have no problems with it there. When the board's going over the trucks, it has, like, this little dip. And it's kind of nice to like lean your foot against the dip and it get a little leverage and you kind of know that's like the back end or the front end of the board. I just really like the extra little concave there. For me, it was just something I appreciated. Then it also has that unique premium big board feel. I had a Lycan TRX for probably about three weeks. So the majority of my time has been on something like a Backfire. It's similar to a Zella, but it's a Backfire G3. So just kind of like a medium kind of deck. I'm a pretty tall guy. I'm like 6'3", 200 pounds. So I definitely could go for the bigger type of boards. And I just really like that big platform, that big kind of feel. It just gives you this like extra bit of comfort. It's so much easier to eat the road up because you have this big premium thing. I just like that it basically brought back that big board feel coming from the G3. It came with belt covers and usually belt covers is kind of like an extra accessory. I know when I bought my Lycan TRX 2.0, it did not have belt covers on there and I didn't really need it, but obviously with all the issues that you could have with belts and that belts eventually break down, it is nice to have a cover to make sure that nothing extra is coming in there and hitting it. And then same with the motor guard, like motor guards are kind of like a little bit of a newer thing. I know a lot of uh, really good boards that don't have them. I also had one on my Lycan TRX 2.0 and I just really like the motor guards because this is kind of like the the heart of your board, what's pushing it out there, and it kind of sticks off at the end. So it's very, very easy to and somehow, some way, like smack the wall, like versus other boards. Like my Backfire G3, if I ran it you know, one way into a wall, I'm gonna be pretty much fine. But with having those big motors there, it just has like a, a very vulnerable part. So I do like the belt cover they put on there and the design as well. I have no issues with these wheels. They feel really fresh. Um, they have a very bouncy feel. I'm gonna kind of get more into that in the mix, but I just feel like the wheels are very, very high quality. I have no issues with them. Um, just no, yeah, I'm just really, so far, really, really liking the AT tires. This is my first time really, I've ridden boards with AT tires before, but this is my first time myself getting into it and just, you know, using it as an everyday. I really did enjoy backfires and I had no issues. Um, I didn't even get my air pump yet and I've had no issues with it too. So things might change if uh, like they need to be pumped up more, but also like just touching them and like, like basically looking at them, they seemed fully pumped though. Like if they wouldn't seem fully pumped, I probably would have waited. It has a fast charger too, which I really, really like. That was the one small thing on my Lycan TRX that I didn't really like was that it had a standard battery. And although my Lycan TRX had just an amazing battery, uh, it was like a five hour charge time. So Backfire's upgraded the power of the battery because Backfire and the TRX are very, very similar in um, the, how big their battery is, but you charge much, much faster with the Backfire charger. So I do appreciate the extra quality there. They could have just kept it lower, saved some you know, money, things like that. And I really appreciate jumping up to a better charger. The one touch to start, this should be a standard on all boards, but it's just so nice not having to go down to your board and touch it and turn it on. Or, you know, if you're charging your board, you could just have it charged over there, get your remote out, just turn it on. It'll show you how charged the board is and you can just turn it off. It should be on every board and I'm just glad that they had it here. All right, guys, let's jump into the mixed aspects I have with this board and that is the flexible deck. Now, part of me really likes it because it gives it a unique feel. I felt like the air tires on top of the flexi deck give it this really plush feel because normally I'm used to cloud wheels and although they have, you know, a 
a pretty unique surface. They're not the typical rubber that has the extra give and just has a nice uh, soft plump to it, you know, when you're riding down the road. On top of that, having the really flexible deck, it just has this very floating on air style vibe. I feel like the pneumatic tires on top of the flex eject, they kind of complement each other in a very, very good way. It flexes a lot. I was watching this one video of this guy do a flex test on it. He was probably like 160 pounds just jumping on it. And when he was coming down, he was almost touching the floor. What do you think is gonna happen if you're 250, 275 pounds? I even had a buddy of mine who's 250 and he stood on it and he put one foot on and he almost didn't wanna fully stand on it because of how much it was giving in. I'm kind of torn of whether that's a really good thing or if it's a bad thing. It's probably one of the only popular e-skates that has this kind of flexi deck and I kind of like it, but at the same time, you lose kind of a, a little bit of that big board feel by having it flex. And you know, like my Lycan said, you could be up to 440 pounds. You could not do that here. I would say if you're around 240 plus, I probably would just skip on it for that. But there's a lot of other people who are like 200, 180, 160, it's just good for you. It's just a shame that it's so powerful and can take a big guy up a hill, but the actual flexibility of the deck hinders you. All right, guys, let's jump into the cons of this board. And I don't have too many, but the one main con kind of affects so many other things on this board. And the main con here is the battery. Now, I looked at this on paper and I was already a little bit wary about it. My buddy ordered an X-Way Atlas and he was pretty disappointed with the battery size. That was pretty much the only disappointment that he had. And so I was kind of very wary about this and I knew that the Backfire had the exact same size battery as this one. I rode this almost to, to empty twice on full. I had about 18 miles ridden for two different trips. So I would venture to say that it's probably gonna last, I mean, for me, I'm like 200 pounds, 205 pounds, probably like 11 miles if you were gonna kill it, but I'm probably not gonna do it. It was definitely slowing down quite a bit. It got down to like one bar, barely going. I, was, I really didn't wanna deplete it any further. So, I mean, I only get like nine to 10 miles on this. I did order some cloud wheels, so that is supposed to help, but I'm still very disappointed on how little range you get. It's really heavy, so it's like really bulky to recharge, you know what I mean? So you have to be bringing it in and out of places, you know, tons of times. It only has so many charges in its life and you're gonna be flying through those charges even faster and it's already kind of low. So what's it gonna be in six months, nine months? It also has tons and tons of extra power. It has these huge motors. The motors actually look like they're bigger than my Lycan motors. You should have focused on the battery more than the extra motors because I almost leave it mainly in sport, mostly for that battery issue, but sport has plenty, you know what I mean? I understand people want more and I would want more too, but if they made just sport alone, just left it alone, and gave them like more battery, I would have been so happy with this board. Even in sport mode, it dies quick. I don't think I ever really put it in turbo. I never really overly gunned it. And I was still having lots of issues. It dies faster than my Backfire G3. And that has 800 miles on it and cloud wheels, which are bigger than the board is designed for. So it just has all this high end stuff on it and you just can't use it very much because it just is lacking in the battery. But besides me just going in on the battery, it is somewhat okay if you stay on turbo. If you're reasonable with it, you could get a, a decent distance, but it's not gonna be anywhere near what like a G3 could do, which is a G3 is just a basic board or even like a Zealot. I think the Zealot would probably even go any further or like the Zealot S or whatever that the Super Zealot Plus is. The last little cons with this is that it has like a little bit of a jumpy quality to it, kind of like a little bit of a delay. I'll give it gas and I'll, and I'll freeze my finger, like I won't touch it and it'll give it like all of a sudden just jump, like I start flying. I've also had the same issue with the brakes. Um, if you brake it hard, it's totally just skids. I had a buddy of mine try this out as well and he just totally skidded and braked too. But then when I was trying it yesterday, I was conscious of it having a really strong brake. I inched it down a little bit. I could feel the brake. I didn't touch it any further and all of a sudden it broke. It like started braking really hard. So I don't know if it's like a delayed thing. I, I don't know if I just have to get used to it or what, but it has a look like, a little bit of a delay, which I don't really like and I haven't really had much of an issue like this before. The only thing I've had is when the board's fully charged, it will jump every now and again. The more fully charged, the more it will jump. But, and then I feel like sport has 
more power than you need, it's gonna kill it a little too fast. And then if you go on E, it's just too weak. If you have to go up a hill, or if you have to go more than like 15 miles an hour, E is too weak. What I think they should have done, or what they could do, I don't know. They need to put another battery on this thing is what they need to do. But what they should do is tune the sport so it's like a little bit more economical and a little bit more conservative so people can have enough power to get places and keep up with people, but not just dump all this extra power in sport. Like I felt like it was just dump trucking around. I would recommend getting a TRX 3.0 or a Meeple Hurricane. Both those are very similar to this deck. Both those have plenty of power. Both those have mall cell batteries, which are better batteries than this. On top of that, the actual battery size is bigger. The Lycan TRX is a 559 watt hour. This has a 518. I think for this size board, the lowest you should go is 550. You know, it's almost like a Meepo V3 without the ER. It's just, it dies. It feels like it dies just too quick. Like you're having to charge it way too much just to get your rocks off on a ride when the backfires have always been enough. They've always been mid-range before, like when I had a G2T, a G3, very mid-range, but I always felt satisfied when I really pushed it to like a normal full charge. So anyways, guys, that's been my first impression of the Backfire Hammer. I'm really, really liking it. The one thing I don't like is the range. I actually want it to stay on the AT wheels for a little while, but because of the range issue, I'm probably going to try out the cloud wheels, you know, instantly and I'll kind of feel it out from there. I'm hoping I could get, you know, I don't know, like 12, 13, 14 miles on it with those without, you know, getting onto one bar, things like that. But have you tried this board? Let me know what you think down below. What board do you ride? Do you ride AT boards? Do you ride a cheaper board? Do you want this board? I'd be very interested see down below we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and i couldn't do it without any of you guys hope you guys are the best i'm having a great day out here hopefully having a great day at home see you all in the next video peace